Hey guys and gals, Danny Boy here, and today I have the Moto Edge, and what I want to do in this video is discuss the display. Okay, uh, I've been using this phone for almost two weeks now, and I've really gotten a good hang of it, I think, and a good amount of time using it, so I think that uh, I've got a pretty good feel for the display here. So basically, uh, what you get on the Moto Edge here, now granted this phone costs, uh, I got it on the pre-order for $499, that's what the phone was being offered at. Now, the normal price is uh, supposed to be $699, okay, now we're in the summer of 2020 here, and uh, I did the pre-order, so I got it at the $200 off, which uh, I was really happy about. But basically, what we're dealing with here on this particular phone, the Moto Edge, with the display, is a 6.7-inch AMOLED panel, okay? So 6.7 inches, pretty large display here. Um, now, the PPI clocks in at 385, okay? And that might, you know, be a little concerning to some folks, uh, that was an original hesitation that I had uh, before I pre-ordered the phone. I was a little concerned that that 385 PPI might be a little bit too low. And not to mention that, but there is, uh, hence the name Moto Edge, there is curved edges on each side. And again, that was something I was a little bit concerned about in pre-ordering this phone because personally... I like phones that have a flat display, like my OnePlus 7T that I'm using to film this video. Uh, that's what I prefer, is the flat display. However, we do have the edges here, and they're pretty deep edges. I mean, they go down the side of the phone about halfway, I'd say, as you can see there, and, and contrasting the side with the case. Okay, but, uh, yeah, um... So that's that's what it looks like turned on there. Now, even though I normally don't like curved displays, I went ahead and went for this phone because um, of the software feature. If I turn on this little sidebar thing here, uh, they have this button here that when you tap that button, it will actually uh, put the app more on the flat part of the display and black out the edges. So that allows you to um, not have to deal with the edges if you don't want to. Like if I, if I launch Wikipedia here, and I'm probably going to need to turn down the brightness here some so you guys can see this. But, you know, if I, if I go to an article, let's just say Titanic. That just was the first thing that popped into my head, okay? So here you can see that the text is pretty well centered here on the flat part of the display, and that's because I have the edges blacked out, as you can see there with the picture and the text, okay? Now, if I turn that off, watch what happens. See, it goes out more over the edges, and as you can see there, the letters start to spill over the sides of the edges. And this very thing has been my personal issue with curved displays, like on Galaxy Notes, Galaxy S devices. I love the way they look. The OnePlus 7 Pro, uh, the OnePlus 8, OnePlus 8 Pro. I love the way it looks, but this issue with text spilling over the side was always an issue for me because I like to read on my phone. That's probably the primary thing I do on my smartphone is read. Okay, and when that text, see there, spills over the side, that don't work for me. So what I do here is if I tap that button now, it's just as good as a flat display in this respect. So in my personal opinion, of all the curved display phones I've ever had, and I've had a few of them for sure, um, this is the best implementation of a curved display. Okay, because it's really, this is the best of both worlds. You have the curves, but you can get around that for reading text and whatnot. In other words, it's a functional curve display, and that's really, really important for me. Now, some people that, that don't care about that, they're not going to care, okay? But for me, it matters, 
And the mere fact that Motorola put that software feature in there changes everything, in my opinion. Okay, so back to the main discussion here of this, of this video. Now, as I said, um, this is a 385 PPI maximum resolution panel. And for me, that was a bit concerning because, you know, it's not even at the 402 threshold. It's not like an iPhone that's 458. It's not Quad HD in the 500s. So that obviously was a concern because um, 385, you know, especially for these days, especially on a screen this big, it's a little lower than you would expect. Uh, but what I have found in, in using the phone is that's not been an issue at all. Uh, Motorola's done a really good job with the text here. It's not pixelated. Uh, going back to the article here, see, that's not pixelated at all. I mean, it looks really good. You really can't tell if, if someone was to give me this phone and, and have me guess you know, what the PPI is. I'd say, well, between 400 and 450. So that's really, really good. The 385 PPI is not an issue here. Uh, it's plenty. So that's very good. And then, of course, we do have Gorilla Glass 5 on here. And this uh, feels really, really smooth, guys. I mean, smooth display, good touch uh, feeling to it. Um, I really, really like the Gorilla Glass 5. I did not put a screen protector on this phone, basically for two reasons. I couldn't really find one that was being manufactured for it uh, by the normal places I go to look for screen protectors. And then secondly, um, I really, on a curved phone, sometimes... Uh, if the screen protector only comes to the edge, you got that kind of line there, and then, it, you know, you don't have it on the edge. Uh, so, now if you can find one that goes all the way to the sides, that's good, but then you run into the issue of cases. So, you know, sometimes on a curved display phone, screen protectors, at least my experience, hasn't been the best with them. So I kind of decided I'm going to go without a screen protector on this phone, and if it gets scratches, it gets, you know, scratches. There's really nothing I can do about that. But the glass feels so good, especially with the edges there, that you almost don't even want a screen protector. But let's go into the settings here and uh, have a gander of what is offered here under the display. Okay guys, so I'm in the display settings here, and the first thing I want to look at here is the brightness level. Now right now I have it at 33% because I'm filming this video, but normally on this phone I have to keep it at about 95% for normal daily operation. That is equivalent to like on my OnePlus 7 here I keep that one about 60 to 70 percent that's equivalent to that so in other words what I'm trying to say here is this display panel does not get very bright and that's probably the biggest con of this display it's not the 385 ppi it's the fact that it's not a super bright display now 95 percent that's bright enough for me and the battery in this phone is so big you know 4500 milliamp hours that you're okay uh keeping it that bright um you're able you're able to afford that hit on the battery okay um but you know i would prefer that the display brightness be brighter obviously and outdoors it's been a little eh, i wish it was a little bit brighter obviously because i'm already at 95 percent so when i go outside to take photos or videos or whatever i'm kind of lacking in that department of brightness okay so just something to keep in mind if you like super bright displays you're probably going to want to look elsewhere because this display is more on the dim side Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the night light off so we can get into the settings here. Okay, and that, you know, that really doesn't affect the brightness too much. But if I go to adaptive brightness, you can turn that on. And obviously that will change the brightness depending upon the environment that you're in. Okay, and the advanced, of course, we do have the dark theme. If I turn that off, you can see the light theme there. Okay, so... 
Of course, you do have the edge light settings, and what that basically does is light up the edges of the display for notifications and whatnot. Um, and then, of course, the peak display, which is on all Motorola phones. It's when you pick up your phone, you can kind of peek at your notifications and whatnot, okay, as you can see demonstrated there. Okay, uh, let me turn the brightness back down here, guys. Okay, so um, basically what I really wanted to focus on here in getting into the display settings are the color modes. So basically, in typical Android fashion here, you've got three different modes, natural, boosted, and saturated. I obviously leave mine on the saturated because I think that looks the best. Boosted looks good too. I'm not really into the natural way of looking uh of, of the display so I keep it on saturated personally so if I go back out here I do keep the uh, night light on and as you can see I turn that on it really didn't affect the brightness level at all but I keep that on because it gives it an extra uh, warmth over the display over the colors so that they pop a little bit more as you can kind of see here okay so guys you know those are my thoughts here on the display and let's not forget the one of the major features to this display and that's the display refresh rate this is a 90 hertz display so despite the fact that you may not like the curves or you might or the, despite the fact that it's 385 ppi you do have 90 hertz here that's really really good that's you know it's great to have 90 hertz that allows for the smooth scrolling experience, things are buttery smooth, that really, really helps out this display tremendously. Uh, if it didn't have the 90 hertz, you know, it'd still be a good display, but the price couldn't be justified, I don't think, without that. So that's pretty important. Now you can switch that to auto mode if you want the phone to switch back and forth between 60 and 90. Personally, I like to leave it at 90, 24, 7. So guys, that's the display, my thoughts on the display of the Motorola Edge. Okay, guys, so as always, if you're enjoying my videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And then, of course, hitting that thumbs up button helps as well. But for now, guys, peace out.